Okay, we're going to talk about object-oriented design and programming and two main activities, the design and implementation. And usually it breaks down into the design and implementation of representations. And usually these are representations for storing information. And then once we've stored information, then we design and implement routines or methods. And what these methods do is they let us manipulate this stored information. Now this is a very abstract notion of what we're talking about, but just to ground it in a concrete example, maybe the information I want to store is about a student in my class or the grades for an assignment. Then I might need some method or routine for manipulating the student's grade on a particular assignment or averaging uh, the grades from all the assignments. So that, that's an example. So if you look at the basic types, uh, sometimes I'll call these the primitive types. You know, these really are our building blocks for, for storing information. And remember that we have the int type for storing integers. We have the double type for storing real quantities. We have the care type for storing characters, single characters, and then we have the bool type for storing information about things that can be true or false. And it's always important to pick the appropriate type for the piece of information that we're storing. So what kinds of things would we use an integer for? It could be a person's age. It could be the room capacity for a classroom. We're doing some sort of a course scheduling system. It could be the number of students in a class. It could be the number of family members. So any kind of whole quantity, how many people are coming over for dinner, any kind of whole quantity we would use an integer. On the other hand, double, we can use double for mathematical quantities like pi, other constants, uh, grade point average, whoops, your hourly rate if you have an hourly job, the tax rate that you're going to pay on items, and any kind of a percentage any kind of a probability, anything with a fractional portion. In terms of character, we could use character to represent gender, which can be male or female. Uh, if we have a simple letter grade system, then we could use it to represent letter grades like A, B, and C. And then finally, our Booleans, we can represent quantities that can be, or information that can be true or false, like if a given person is present in class, if they're enrolled in a class, if they passed a test, passed the class, things of that nature. And this is great, but you know, one of the things that we can't do here, as you will notice, is we can't represent someone's last name, for example. We can't represent a street address. And of course, if we talk about a person or a student, it's not just someone's name, or a, it, it's a combination of things. We want to store the student's name, their age, their grade point average, their major, and things like that. So clearly, these building blocks uh, let us represent certain pieces of information, but it's, it's not enough. And usually, 
what we want to do in object-oriented uh, programming um, and, and programming in general is we want to represent information about single objects. So we have single objects. So things like age and gender and this, this, that, and the other. But we also want have a need for representing collections of objects. So I don't just have a grade or a letter grade, I actually have several letter grades if I'm teaching a class. So I've got single objects and I've got collections of objects. Now we've already encountered collections of objects. We have the string class, for example. Well, the string is a collection of characters. And with the string, we can represent things like last name, first name, zip code, and actually, this is an important point. Why, would I, why wouldn't I use an integer to represent zip code? Well, some zip codes, at least in the United States, have leading zeros. If we were to represent this as an integer, usually what happens is the integer type strips off the leading zeros, and then we would no longer be representing the zip code. So even though a zip code is a number, uh, we use strings to store a lot of so-called numbers as long as they're not numbers that will be involved in, in any arithmetic computations. So street addresses, zip codes, social security numbers, student IDs, numbers of that type we usually store as strings. And you'll learn a little later that there is a, a class called the vector class and it, it lets you store, create collections of arbitrary objects, but this will be a later topic. So in terms of the basic types, the an int, double, character, and bool, those are all built-in types. Uh, when they're part of the C++ language. String is actually from a library. And, you know, this comes from the library string. And as I said, it, it's a collection of characters. Right? So how did they do this? Where does this come from? There is the class construct. And what this does is it lets us It lets us define new types. So with the class construct, I can use characters to build a more complex type string. And of course, once I have string, then I can use the class construct to build even more complex types. And this is really where we get into design. There are a lot of things that we're going to need to build that's not included, that, that we can't just capture using a single integer or a single string. So for example, a Cartesian point. There is no point class. If I'm writing software to do geometry, I'm going to need a Cartesian point. Well, what is a Cartesian point? I can declare the integer x and y as my point. Or if I needed to, I could use a double to declare x and y. How about a complex number? Sometimes a complex number class is included, but for that I would use a double called real and then imaginary, which I'll abbreviate that way. Things like time. How would we define a time class? Again, it depends. Uh, if you're using it just for uh, everyday use, maybe you only need to represent hours and minutes. If you're using some, if you're using the time object for some scientific experiment, maybe you need to track milliseconds. 
but I, de I could declare an integer for hour and minute. Same thing with date. Then when we get into situations where we want to represent information about people, the definitions or the design becomes a little bit more complicated. Now I'm going to need a string to represent their first name. and their last name. Maybe I also need a string for their address. I could use a double for their hourly rate. If we talk about a student, then again I could use a string for their name I could use a string for their major. I could use a double for their GPA. And so on and so forth. You can think of a lot of other things like, uh, you know, product, course in a class, in a college course. I mentioned date, time, some sort of an event. We could talk about calendars, and so on and so forth. And, and so again, I mean, we have these basic types, integers, doubles, characters, and booleans. A programmer has provided the string library for us in which this person used the class construct to build the string class. But that's pretty much it. If we want to build more complex types from these basic building blocks, then we need to learn how to use the class construct so that we can implement a point class or a person class or a student class. And so that's what we can do with the class construct.